Hey everyone, I'm back. It's been a minute. Uh, my life has been a little bit crazy over the last year or so. Uh, you can see by my background, I'm not exactly in my normal recording zone, which is why it's been a little bit tough for me to be making videos and even getting root to the table very often. However, I've been quietly following this new expansion that's coming out and we are extremely excited about this. And the Kickstarter has opened today. So you can back the new Homeland expansion right now. And I have been reading through the uh, design diaries that were put out by <clears throat> uh, Joshua Yearsley, who is heading this project. And so far, so good. It's looked really exciting. But even just today, we got a new piece of extremely exciting news. And this expansion, I'm not even trying to overhype this. This might actually be an the biggest expansion, the biggest shift, the most additional stuff added to Root basically ever, including how much we got in the Underworld Kickstarter and the Marauder Kickstarter. So let's get into it a little bit. As we can see, it's uh, it's already funded. We're uh, well over the target, so uh, go ahead and back it yourself. But the project is officially funded. I think it happened within the first 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, we got not two, which is our normal, but three new factions in this expansion. So first, let's just check out this little video. Notice in the video trailer, they used the older meeples designed for the bats. But yeah, I couldn't believe this. When they first announced that we were getting bats and frogs, those were two of the three animals that I was most excited for. And just today, we got news that we're getting the third faction, which is going to be centered around not just skunks, which was the third animal, so now I've got my whole wish list, which I'm very excited about, but it's also a sort of, as I'll explain, a bit of a vagabond replacement, vagabond adjacent faction, so I think it's really clever because the vagabond has its dedicated fan base. Um, I'm sort of lukewarm on the vagabond myself, but I like that now there's something that you can do that's similar to the Vagabond that uses a lot of the same components, but it means that you are not going to be using the Vagabond in games where you're using this new skunk faction. So they're going to be mutually exclusive. But let's start talking a little bit about the new stuff and just, man, look at this cover art. Did it get squished? Yeah, I think this squished it a bit. Uh, so we got our frog and toad faction here, our amphibious uh, gang. We've got the bats and we've got our skunks. So $50 pledge seems very reasonable. There's other different tiers that you can get if you want to get extra stuff, but I've already got everything. So I'm probably just going to pledge this myself. And here are the three meeples. I noticed that they've changed the bat meeple a little bit. This one looks a lot better. It has a little bit more character than the first one that they showed. And look at how much things, uh, how much stuff we're getting. Three new factions. I'm not sure if they're going to be insurgent or militant, but... Uh, from what we've heard, it sounds like the frog faction, the Lilypad Diaspora, is supposed to be a little bit more red, a little bit more militant, and the bats are going to be capable of doing both roles, but I don't really want to pass judgment until these things are finalized. So we're going to have to actually get playtesting, and I'm very looking forward to playtesting these guys, and we'll, I'll explain a little bit later how you can take part in that as well. And the new skunk faction just dropped today, or first news of it dropped today, and they're still early in development, so we have no uh, concept, I guess, just yet, other than armchair analysis of how militant they're going to be. So, the three new factions, the Twilight Council, love that name, that's the bats, the Lilypad Diaspora, so I guess the backstory is that these frogs and toads left the woodland a long time ago, so they became a diaspora. And now they're seeking to return to their homeland. And the knaves of the deep wood. So <laughs> I like that word, knaves. So uh, they are going to be rapscallions going around causing chaos, similar in vain to the Vagabond, but doing different mechanics. <clears throat> I'm also getting over a cough, so it's just a lot of stuff going on in my life right now. Of course, they're going to be including a hireling pack based on the I presume three factions, but uh, we'll look at this in a minute. And we're getting a new deck. 
This is the first additional deck that we'll be getting that's gonna, uh, sort of similar to the Exiles and Partisans deck. This is the Squires and Disciples deck. And look at that back art. Let's see if we can open that up. Oh, yeah, we can do that. So like people were theorizing and what I was hoping for, they've got the back art that's going to be uh, featuring the two new factions as well as the Marauder factions, similar to how the Exiles and Partisans deck showed the, at the time, expansion factions of otters, lizards, uh, moles, and crows. So all new cards, and this is so exciting because if you, uh, if you know me, I'm not exactly a fan of the base deck. I think the Exiles and Partisans deck really brought root into its sort of modern form because it's just a more balanced deck, but the cards are more interesting and fun to play with. And now with an additional four years worth of development skill, I'm really excited to see what kinds of powers they end up putting into this new deck. We're also getting a new double-sided map. One of them is the uh, Gorge map, which is a sort of redesign of uh, Sam Smith, Lord of the Boards Gorge map that he designed a couple years back, which I have actually played on. It's it's really, really good. Shout out to Sam. It's a really well-made, probably one of the better fan maps that I've seen. And then there's the Marsh map, which is uh, based off of a Patrick Leader fan map. It's funny how the guy who runs the company also makes his own fan content, but it's being adapted into an official uh, map, which is great. And this is the one that according to a design diary, is going to be able to scale to different player counts. So I think it can shrink and it can expand. But I think the maps uh, still have a little bit more cooking to do. So they are not as far along as the factions, but that is exciting for people who love to play five, maybe six player route. <clears throat> so this is uh, the bundle that's going to include uh, some more stuff if you need to add more things to your bundle, like if you missed out on a previous expansion whatnot, the all-in, of course. Clockwork, I personally don't play a ton of clockwork, but I am happy that it's being supported for people who are really into the clockwork um, gameplay. I do play a little bit of clockwork when I'm trying to learn new factions. I did a lot of it with the uh, Mechanical Marquis 2 when I was trying to figure out how the badgers worked. That was when I was by myself, I was just running through the game plan against that bot. So I am glad that these things exist. So we've got the Twilight Council. I'm not going to read this whole thing for you. They're going to be using these edicts uh, that are going to sort of change the rules of how gameplay is going to happen on the map. But also, they are based around some type of United Nations type council where they're trying to cool down the conflict in the war in the woodland, which is pretty interesting. But they do it in a way that's similar to battle, but not quite as uh, violent, where you can agree to concede the battle or the uh, assembly. You can concede the assembly and then get some value for it. So it's going to change up the interplayer dynamics. And this was a big theme that Joshua Yearsley mentioned in one of his design diaries is that they're trying to add in river folk expansion type above the table dynamics where there's going to be more things to interact with as modes of dialogue and diplomacy between the players, which is really cool. And so this assembly action that's going to be available to all players. So all the different players at the table will be able to do these assembly actions if the Twilight Council's in play. <clears throat> the Lilypad Diaspora, this is the one I'm currently maybe a bit more excited about, although the, the new one got me extremely hyped when I saw this this morning. But the Lilypad Diaspora introduces a new suit to the map. So it's going to be adding these frog suits. So these little tokens are also suit markers. So you'll be putting it in a clearing. And if it's on the, uh, I guess, docile side, the peaceful side, it's going to be adding. So this clearing will be a mouse and frog clearing. But once it becomes militant, you flip it over and look at this little angry frog. It's going to take over the clearing and basically shut out the mouse suitedness of that clearing. But not only that, like when it comes, um, <clears throat> just like we have one suit of card for every clearing, there's also a new frog deck that's included. And these aren't just cards like how there's moods for the warlord or leaders for the eerie. These are cards 
that are functionally similar to regular deck cards that other players can have in their hand. So you can dole out these frog cards that are going to be interacting with the frog suits. Let's see if I can open this. Yeah, so you can see here, this is a frog suited card and it has a wild crafting cost, but there are going to be a few cards that are going to require you using a uh, frog clearing or a crafting piece in a frog clearing in order to craft it. So it's going to make you want to go into their land and coexist with them, which is super, super interesting. That's kind of a, a key thing about Root that I really like over other area control games is that sometimes you want to control the area. You want to get everyone else out. But Root is a bit more nuanced than traditional area control games where sometimes coexisting in a clearing is more advantageous than just raw brute strength pushing everyone else out. <coughs> oh dear. See if I can manage this whole thing. And the latest announcement, the Knaves of the Deep Wood, these are the Vagabond replacement faction. It's going to use Skunk Meeples as its additional warriors, but super interestingly, it's going to use the Vagabond character pawns and character cards. So when you pick the faction, you're going to choose three Vagabond characters like the Vagrant, uh, the Scoundrel, the Harrier, and you're going to put them on your player board. And then those three meeples, assuming you have the meeples, uh, I guess that means they're going to have to make the Vagabond pack easier to find. But this is going to make it so that you're going to have these three leaders or captains of your faction. So each Vagabond character is going to be responsible for birdsong, daylight, and evening, respectively. So you undergo the phases of each one. And what I think is kind of cool is that they can't ever be in the same clearing. So you can't have, let's say, your vagrant meeple captain in the same clearing as your uh, arbiter meeple. So you have to plan that out really well. And they're going to use items uh, in a not so similar way, but they'll be using them in a familiar way. So swords are still going to be used for battle actions, boots will be for move, but we know very little about this so far. Then we've got the maps I talked about, uh, the hireling pack. Ah, yes, let's open this up. So of course we're going to have hirelings representing the frogs and the toads. Let's actually read this. Three new hirelings enter the fray. The freshwater refugees, obviously the frogs, the heartwood peacemakers, that's obviously a reference to the uh, Twilight Council, and the neutral prosperous farmers. I guess the prosperous farmers, <laughs> oh my god, it's a duck. Oh man, that's awesome. So I guess we don't have one that represents the knaves, but I like having these neutral ones that don't eliminate factions from the pool. So uh, they're all, of course, going to be double-sided. You're going to have promoted and demoted sides, which is very exciting for people who love uh, hirelings. I consider myself in the hireling uh, fan base personally, <clears throat> although I don't get to play them too often. I, I like having them in. And then we've got, of course, this new deck, which is just so hype. Let's read this quick. Try out new strategies with the Squires and Disciples deck. Uh, Exiles and Partisans can be swapped. So now what's really nice about this is that Exiles and Partisans is no longer just the standard deck for competitive play. We're going to have a meaningful choice. And I know that there are some people who love the base deck, but when it comes to a lot of the players who, I guess, play the way that I like to play, we don't really play with the base deck anymore. So now we actually have a choice between using the sort of standard classic deck that we always use, the Exiles and Partisans, or this new one. Cards inspired by the Marauder and Homeland factions and abilities that depend on hand composition with a dash of goofs and shenanigans. Very root. Want to change when the game ends or how dominance cards work? Oh, this is new to me. Now you can. Okay, let's see. What does this say? Let's see if we can get a little preview of this. I love the card art back. This is a bit more reminiscent of the base deck with this sort of um, <clears throat> divided into quadrants. Council Advocates. And none of this is final, by the way. This is all still in development, so subject to change. The game now ends because of victory points at the end of your turn, not immediately. <clears throat> Whoa. That's very new. Huh because of victory points at the end of your turn. So I guess if you craft this, 
now that means somebody else can hit 30 and then you will still have a chance to do your whole turn and supersede them. That is insane. Whew. And then you've got one that's inspired by the warlord, Brazen Demagogue, or Demagoguery. Playing a dominance card does not remove your victory points marker. What? Oh, you can pursue dominance and points? Okay, that's really cool. I love dom... Oh, that's so good. Because dominance is... It okay, I have strong opinion that I think even though dominance attempts in general are less likely to lead to success, they make roots so much more interesting. So if you go on my channel, you can see my playlist that I created of all of my favorite tournament games from the winter tournament over the last, uh, not two years, but the last two winter tournaments and most of the most interesting games that I consider mandatory viewing for fans of spectating root had dominance plays. But I think people are reticent to do it because you're no longer being able to score points. This is so cool. Oh, I can't wait to see how this affects gameplay. This is so sweet. And of course, we have some add-ons. Oh, ooh, I might have to pledge extra in, in that case. So the neoprene mat for the, the maps, the deluxe frog clearing. So if you have deluxe markers, because the frog suit is now going to go on top of the clearing markers, you have to be able to have this like physical thing to put on top. I wonder how that's gonna work. Deluxe clearing markers. We already have this, don't we? Identical in design to previous clearing markers, but now with a new, more durable material. Oh yeah, I have heard that people have had these breaks, so I might finally get these because I it's one of the only pieces of deluxe stuff I never got. But now you're gonna have to have a shell that's gonna hop on top to display that it's a frog suit as well. I wonder how they're going to be able to differentiate between it's frog only because it's on the uh, violent, I want to say, or the militant side versus on the peaceful side. <clears throat> and they're going to be giving us faction boards. Oh, I might actually have to get this too because I travel so much with my root set. Oh, cardstock faction boards to aid game storage. So you can swap them out, leave your thick physical boards at home and just travel with these little cards, which that's tempting too. Man, I cannot wait to get these games. Oh, and last bit of uh, important news. <clears throat> All the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The print and plays. So they are scheduling phased releases of the print and plays. So on October 25th, in three days, we're gonna get the first print and play of the Lilypad Diaspora. Now. Don't get too excited. I'm not going to be making teaching videos for all of these factions until they're finalized because I don't want to uh, explain thoroughly how these rules work just to have them changed because people who watch them might internalize rules and then it's kind of hard to unlearn something you've already learned. So I'm going to wait until the factions are completed and done, at which point I'll probably uh, use my print and play copy to teach it so that people can get it to the table. So, uh, then on November 1st, we're going to get the first look at the Twilight Council, uh, and the Knaves of the Deep Wood are going to be coming out a week after that. And I, I know that these are less polished because they've been working on these first two for much longer, but still excited to see how it affects gameplay. And, uh, they will be available for TTS play. So if you have Tabletop Simulator, you'll probably be able to get the assets and play there. I'm sure people are gonna be playing over here on the Woodland Warriors Discord server. Or if you like playing physically, you can just get the files, which I'm gonna do, and then print them off and be able to use them. I can't wait to see what these frog cards are. God, there's so much to look forward to. Anyway, that's uh, that's about it. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to have to start playing some more Root TTS with people online, so catch me uh, occasionally in the Woodland Warriors Discord server, and see you guys soon. Bye.